Hi everybody. Uh, can can everyone list, uh, hear me? All right. Thank you so much. All right. I was just in a in a different uh, presentation, so uh, sorry about the delay. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, please let me know if you can see my screen. I think it's sharing the wrong screen. Let me try again. All right. Um, is uh, is my screen visible uh, with the presentation? Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, so. Thank you for joining my session today. Um, so my name is Dinesh Joshi and uh, I will be talking about building Apache Cassandra behind the scenes. Um, this is Cassandra 4.0 and a um, uh, little bit about me uh, before we get started. Um, I work at Apple and uh, I work on Cassandra. I'm also an Apache Cassandra committer, been in the community for a while and uh, my major Current work in Cassandra is related to Cassandra 4.0, although we've made certain bug fixes to 3.0 as well. Uh, but um, uh, 4.0 is where uh, I have contributed my maximum uh, time. So with that, let, let's get started. So um, I'm going to talk about some of the industry trends first. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the history of Cassandra and also the architecture. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Cassandra's internals a little bit, and then uh, talk about challenges in testing and validations, and finally uh, testing uh, Cassandra and what makes it very hard, um, and uh, a summary. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, for those of you who are not uh, familiar, 4.0 is uh, one of the first releases that has been um, in the works for over two years now. Um, and uh, I want to add a little bit of context as to um, how uh, 4.0 is being built uh, and what are the things that we are doing to ensure that this is a, a, a good, uh, stable release um, and as bug-free as possible in the Cassandra community. So uh, can anybody <clears throat> guess what this uh, chart represents? You can type it in the chat uh, what your theory is about this chart. And I'm sure everybody is going to um, relate to this particular uh, chart once I tell you what it is. Any guesses? OK, I'll just uh, put a label on it. Uh, this is the industry uh, data growth trend. Um, and uh, basically, the the industry uh, which I'm talking about is is everybody that uh, today is attending ApacheCon is working in. Um, basically, the industry has experienced a lot of data growth uh, over time, and with COVID-19, it's gotten even worse uh, because everybody's working from home. There's a lot more uh, emphasis on uh, remote working, and um, and so. Uh, the data growth in the industry is uh, phenomenal. And uh, with this data growth, uh, the systems that store the data have also uh, to, uh, they need to scale as well. And uh, there is um, an added emphasis on um, the the quality of the, of the storage systems as well as the speed and reliability of the storage systems. So that's, uh, that's what our uh, industry is experiencing at the moment. 
And so Cassandra is not immune to any of these um, industry trends as well. Um, and so uh, with that said, uh, let's see what uh, Cassandra is lo looks like in the community. So currently Cassandra has a various releases that people use in production. We have Cassandra 2.x series, which is stable and widely adopted. Um, and then there is the Cassandra 3.0 series, which is also stable and uh, adopted in the industry. And we have Cassandra 3.11, uh, which is also stable. Uh, it has some performance improvements over 3.0, and it's um, it's also quite uh, widely adopted. So we have various releases of Cassandra with uh, some incremental benefits in, uh, in, in the community. And <clears throat> 4.0 is the next unreleased version of Cassandra that we are working on, um, um, as in the Cassandra community is working on. And this is the next uh, release. Uh, of Cassandra. And this uh, particular release of Cassandra is uh, quite important because uh, it's been in the works for quite quite a long time. And also it brings in a lot of features uh, to the table. So uh, these are, if you, if you look at the Cassandra change log, you're going to see pages and pages of changes. And if you try to uh, look at uh, all the changes, you will find that there are over 400 changes uh, in Cassandra 4.0. And uh, these changes are quite uh, significant. So in, in, in the community, um, whenever we make a commit, uh, a change is termed as a, uh, uh, could be a feature or it could be a bug fix or it could be a minor change. But uh, with Cassandra 4.0, we have a lot of changes that are coming in. Uh, and with, uh, with those changes, comes the risk of um, bugs and regressions and stuff like that. So, uh, so let's see uh, what uh, what Cassandra's internals look like, uh, because with all of these changes, we need to test uh, Cassandra uh, so that we ensure that the release is uh, reasonably uh, stable. So here's the Cassandra architecture. Um, and uh, most of you should be familiar uh, with this architecture, but if you're not, I'll just take you through it. So with Cassandra, we, ha we, we have individual nodes that are participating in the overall uh, ring, uh, which is called the Cassandra ring. And uh, this makes the Cassandra um, system uh, as a whole act like a distributed hash table because each node in the ring is going to have uh, a certain range of data. And that uh, range of data is called the token range. And this um, node is res primarily responsible for storing that data, but also we need to make sure that this data is available um, for uh, consumption uh, without a any downtime in case a node goes down, right? Uh, so <clears throat> this um, uh, node is gonna take the data and it's gonna replicate to all the replicas uh, of, of that node. And typically in Cassandra, we have uh, a, a replication factor of three, which means that the, the data is going to be stored across three different replicas um, for, for durability and availability. Uh, so uh, with that said, um, whenever a node fails in Cassandra, the from the customer's perspective, from the client's perspective, the system continues to function as a whole, uh, but we have to internally repair that node and ensure that data that that node has is consistent. So apart from the overall architecture of Cassandra, um, Cassandra has various components within, within each node. Uh, this, these components are uh, non-exhaustive, uh, but these are the most important components, uh, which is the storage engine, the coordination layer. Um, there, is, there are activities that uh, it runs uh, like repair, uh, which is to uh, reconcile data differences between nodes in the cluster. Um, there's streaming, which does data transfer between nodes in a cluster and uh, compaction that uh, uh, ensures that data that is deleted or is no longer reachable is dropped. Uh, over time. So uh, 
and then there is also the internet communication in Cassandra, which means uh, you know the, all the nodes they need to participate in a cluster. And in order to participate uh, in the cluster, there is internet communication. And uh, there are other parts of Cassandra that I've not really um, called out here, but there is gossip and uh, other parts of Cassandra that participate in um, in making the cluster look like a single entity from a client's perspective. So with this, uh, with this said, uh, there is a lot of stuff in Cassandra uh, that um, that is participating in making the system, uh, the, the whole database work as a as a single unit. And um, and so whenever we change anything in Cassandra, the, there are uh, changes that may uh, affect all of these layers or some of these layers within within the database. Um, and so when we when we uh, change something, we need to make sure that there are no regressions that are introduced and that the system continues to function as uh, previously expected. And uh, as we uh, dive into the further slides, uh, I'll, I'll uh, talk about the progressive difficulty of testing these different uh, parts of Cassandra. So, <clears throat> so let's let's talk about testing Cassandra now. Um, what there are various challenges in testing Cassandra, and those challenges uh, are primarily because there are a lot of variables. So anybody who has operated Cassandra knows that there are a lot of components within within Cassandra, and there are a lot of norms that we can tune. So for example, we can change uh, a lot of settings, um, uh, and these settings can uh, lead to uh, great performance for certain types of uh, uh, schemas. Um, and uh, some of these settings may uh, introduce um, uh, performance regressions for other types of schemas. Um, and so there are certain behavior characteristics that are dependent on the settings that Cassandra has. So, um, and to add to this, we have a different deployment configuration. So uh, you, you can deploy this uh, in, um, um, in two data centers, three data centers, four data centers, five data centers. You can deploy them um, in large EC2 machines, or you can deploy them in uh, very tiny hardware. So uh, the deployment configuration also matters uh, when, when it comes to uh, testing uh, Cassandra. And uh, the schemas uh, or use cases that are, you can model on Cassandra are very varied. So there's a lot of variance on the schemas that you can use, and people use Cassandra in very uh, different ways. So now I think uh, you, you get the idea that there are a lot of variables that uh, come into picture when it comes to um, you know deploying and running Cassandra. And so naturally, when it comes to making a change in Cassandra's code base, it also means that you have to you know make sure that all of these things, uh, that the system as a whole works under different settings, uh, different components behave exactly the way they were supposed to behave earlier, and um, that, they, that we are not regressing, uh, we are not losing any data, uh, we are not uh, causing any sort of bugs uh, from, from the usage standpoint. Um, so what does testing in Cassandra look like right now? So in the open source community, uh, we have uh, various unit tests. Uh, Cassandra has a lot of unit tests. Um, it has Python D tests and upgrade tests and in JVM D tests. And um, D tests are basically distributed tests. What that means is we spawn various instances of Cassandra and uh, each instance um, is, a, is a physically separate process. In case of Python, whereas in, in JVM D tests, we have a, a single JVM that kind of models different instances of Cassandra as threads within the same JVM. Um, and but the, the general idea is that you can launch a three node cluster or five node cluster and you can run some tests uh, within the scope of your uh, test machine. So, you know, let's say you have a, a laptop and you can launch the Python D tests and it runs the D tests. But these d-tests also require a lot of resources. So, um, uh, so, but uh, they they can be still run locally uh, on your machine. Uh, in JVM d-tests are um, um, are used to test some of the components, and these are more focused uh, for uh, doing white box testing in Cassandra. So, uh, what that means is um, you have d-tests, 
that are um, running within the JVM, but um, it is uh, a single JVM. So you, you can much more easily uh, mock out components, uh, especially the networking component in Cassandra to test uh, the uh, test uh, Cassandra's uh, code flow. Um, and this also makes it easier for a developer to debug uh, uh, failures that are um, uh, pertaining to um, a distributed setup of the of the cluster and upgrade tests are are also part of the test suite that cassandra has and um, and the upgrade tests uh, basically test that when cassandra is in a upgrade state or we are upgrading cassandra and it is running in a mixed mode state that we don't regress um, uh, we don't regress the um, uh, from from the existing state. So what that means is, uh, let's say uh, there's a, a cluster that you have uh, running 3.0, and uh, you are upgrading it to 4.0. And an upgrade test will check when that when the when the cluster is partially in 4.0 and 3.0, that there are no um, um, there are no regressions uh, because one of the underpinning principles with Cassandra is that we never take the database offline. In even even in case of upgrades, we continue to function. And so, uh, as we update individual nodes, uh, the customer is uh, doesn't experience any downtime, uh, which is not something that other databases can typically do. So uh, the with with all these tests, uh, the the natural question is: um, Are these enough? Um, are these tests enough? And uh, the answer to to that question is a resounding no. And uh, and the reason why these are insufficient is because um, here's a graph. Um, uh, the the source of the graph is is below, and we have a lot of issues that we've uh, seen uh, being patched in Cassandra uh, post uh, the 3.0 release. Uh, and some of these are availability issues. Some of these are crashes um, um, that um, the, the user experiences, uh, which is the, the SRE's experience. And then there are correctness uh, issues as well. And uh, these defects are, uh, are, are non-trivial. Uh, to fix, uh, and you may not always uh, experience these failures, uh, or you may not always hit these bugs. Uh, and uh, it's only when you reach um, maybe a certain scale, or you uh, you are using Cassandra in a certain configuration, that you may actually experience these issues. And so, obviously, the uh, the logic follows is that if we see these errors or, or defects in Cassandra, then there are uh, uh, then, then we need to figure out a better testing strategy, uh, more effective testing strategy to ferret out these bugs. Um, and so going back to the challenges that we have, uh, if you look at wh why uh, it is hard to um, expose these bugs is because there are a lot of moving parts. Uh, the components that uh, make up Cassandra the, the settings, the deployment configuration, the schemas, the use cases, and uh, you know, uh, in, in uh, many situations, uh, we have to um, uh, use Cassandra in a mixed mode, uh, that is during upgrades, you're we, we gonna see uh, a lot of these issues uh, crop up. Um, it's only when you uh, set these uh, components in a specific configuration that you might actually experience these issues. So, <clears throat> what makes this even worse is the uh, in a distributed system, time is a quantity that is kind of weird. Uh, what I mean to say is that uh, in a cluster, when you have um, uh, different nodes talking to each other, each node has its own um, clock. And uh, it's a well-known phenomena in a distributed system that uh, when, when you're coordinating between two nodes, uh, or two processes that, are, that have their own clock, it is very hard to actually um, um, establish a happens before relationship, uh, which means that um, if the clocks drift in the systems, it's gonna affect uh, the, the way the same query or same uh, set of packets that are flowing between the two nodes um, uh, to be processed in a slightly different way 
uh, depending on how the uh, timing is. The other issue with timing is that it's very hard to simulate a certain race condition. A lot of race conditions are due to timing issues in the system. So if let's say you you hit a error condition or a bug because the there is um, a slight variability in the way packets are being de are being delivered uh, in in our system, then it is very hard to do. Uh, to simulate that that particular situation exactly in a test scenario, um, and especially this gets worse because when when you have let's say a ten node cluster or a twenty node cluster, now there are messages being sent back and forth um, across a lot of nodes. So eventually, what ha happens is that um, if you have to simulate this entire system, it it is a very complicated problem, uh, and timing is a issue here. The other issue is uh, the message delivery in Cassandra 4.0 is uh, asynchronous. Well, what that means is we have switched to async IO. So uh, some of the operations that were uh, obviously synchronous uh, are non are, are asynchronous at this point. And uh, as a result, um, there are a lot of um, uh, edge cases where uh, earlier a, a synchronous uh, code flow is now asynchronous. And um, and that also introduces uh, a difficulty in testing. Um, node failures is another uh, big issue that uh, you, you if you if you want to simulate a node failure, it's generally much easier to simulate a node failure uh, than compared to the first two issues. <clears throat> and also uh, race conditions. Uh, within the process, as well as across different processes of Cassandra uh, that are running in different nodes, uh, these race conditions are are um, very uh, hard to simulate. So any piece of code that is uh, multi-threaded is uh, is by definition it is non-deterministic and it is harder to test. So if you go looking for uh, a library in Java that allows you to test uh, concurrent code. Uh, you would be hard pressed to find something that is reasonable, <clears throat> and um, and finally native network flakiness. So uh, believe it or not, there are a lot of edge conditions that are exposed because network drops a packet or there is flakiness um, in the in the networking, and uh, or there are system parameters uh, that are uh, set differently uh, in Cassandra. Uh, uh, what I mean to say is the 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 system that is running Cassandra has a lot of parameters that uh, make uh, network behave in a different way. So the test setup for that network uh, uh, it, it, networking is is going to also change the way networking works within uh, Cassandra. And finally, uh, uh, Java's garbage collector. Um, this also adds a form of non-determinism in the Cassandra process. So uh, that all of these challenges are in addition to having a complicated code base, as well as uh, a ton of distributed components that are talking to each other. So coming to testing uh, Cassandra 4.0. So how do we uh, test uh, Cassandra 4.0? Um, there are various approaches that the community has adopted. Uh, one of the approach is replay testing, and we'll dive uh, more deeper into each of these um, uh, test um, scenario uh, testing approaches uh, in a, in, a, in the further slides. But uh, the, the first uh, one of the first approaches is replay testing. Um, the second approach is fuzz and property based testing, and uh, third approach is distributed tests and fault injection testing. And the last approach is upgrade testing. Um, and let me uh, talk through uh, these individual uh, uh, testing strategies. So uh, replay testing is uh, basically um, when, where we uh, capture traffic and we replay it. And uh, in Fodato, we have uh, this feature called as FQL, which is full query logging. And with this feature, what we can do is we can capture logs um, uh, or rather capture uh, queries and log them into binary files that are uh, stored on disk. And uh, then uh, take those files and replay the contents of those files. 
So the queries that you actually experience in production, we can take those queries and we can capture them and on, on individual nodes or all nodes uh, in a cluster. And then we can take those uh, individual queries and replay them on a test cluster. And uh, this is a very effective way of uh, testing um, testing uh, uh, Cassandra. Um, so uh, in this in this uh, approach, we can either capture all queries or we can also uh, sample queries on in individual nodes. Um, and uh, this is a high throughput approach uh, for uh, for testing Cassandra. Uh, what I mean to say is that uh, when we capture queries in um, in production, it doesn't have to compromise on um, on how many queries we capture. Um, the implementation that FQL has is a very low overhead in implementation. So as long as you have uh, enough uh, disk IO, uh, we can capture every single query that is uh, making it to that node uh, and then uh, log it uh, without uh, really having to drop the the number of uh, drop a few queries on the on the floor because uh, it may degrade performance. Um, and uh, replay testing is typically uh, carried out on uh, a cluster that is upgraded or is in the process of being upgraded. Um, and that uh, basically uh, simulates a, a scenario where you have upgraded Cassandra with the same data set and you're throwing the same queries uh, at that cluster. And the expectation is that that cluster also uh, gives you the same data and responses that your old cluster uh, gives so from from a user standpoint when we upgrade a user from let's say 3.0 to 4.0 functionally they should not see any difference in the response characteristics meaning the latency and the throughput of queries and also they should not see any changes in the read or write path of cassandra so the, the results of the queries pre 4.0 upgrade uh, and post 4.0 upgrade should be exactly the same um, so um, and in in all all uh, dimensions. Um, coming to uh, fuzz and property based testing, um, <clears throat> the, uh, Cassandra recently open sourced this tool called Harry, um, and Harry allows you to uh, perform uh, basically uh, fuzz testing. Uh, and uh, uh, and so so before we uh, talk about <clears throat> what, uh, this uh, further, uh, let's talk a little bit about fuzz testing and property-based testing. So uh, these are uh, these are testing tools that are uh, that have been around for quite a long time. Um, the basic idea of these tools is to uh, explore the state space of a component. So let's say you have a component that uh, takes a certain uh, set of inputs, and uh, you can uh, pass various uh, valid values in those inputs and you get a valid response back. Uh, but what happens uh, in, in the real world is that those uh, that component may not always get a valid uh, input, in which case uh, there are edge cases that are left unexplored. And what uh, fuzz and property-based testing does is uh, it helps you establish an invariant for that component and explore the state space of the inputs for that component. And um, the, the tool allows you to pass in uh, various values and ensuring that the way invariant that you have established is always true. And uh, this, uh, this approach has allowed us to expose issues um, in, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in areas like um, uh, checksumming. Um, or uh, or uh, framing uh, within uh, Cassandra's uh, internode uh, networking protocol, um, and and so th th this is a very useful tool where a uh, a developer may not be able to write a very effective test or explore the state space uh, in its entirety, and uh, this tool uh, these tools allow us to do this uh, very easily. Um, Harry is a more recent contribution into Cassandra, uh, but uh, Prior to Harry, uh, we use a library called Quick Theories, uh, and it is able to uh, do uh, this um, uh, first testing uh, or property-based testing um, in Cassandra's code base. Um, and we have a more uh, in-depth article about this uh, on the Cassandra blog. If you are interested, you can go to the blog link and um, 
and basically look at how uh, Cassandra is using uh, property-based testing and fuzz testing. Um, the other approaches are distributed testing and a fault injection testing. Uh, in this case, uh, what uh, we do is uh, basically uh, spin up a cluster and um, run tests against that cluster. Um, these tests, uh, while these tests are running, uh, uh, we inject fault, um, which means uh, we use uh, stuff like uh, Chaos Monkey or Chaos Gorilla, and we can uh, in introduce Chaos in the overall, um, overall system. Uh, this allows the system to uh, uh, survive uh, failures, and at the same time, we are able to expose bugs related to uh, edge conditions like when hardware fails or when a node suddenly goes offline, or there's uh, flakiness when the node comes online, goes offline um, uh, repeatedly. Uh, and this is one of the more effective ways of ferreting issues out uh, uh, in any distributed system. Uh, the final, uh, the final uh, testing strategy is upgrade testing. This is one of the most critical, uh, in my view, um, uh, to test uh, the upgrade scenarios in Cassandra. And uh, this is not really a special type of testing, but this is basically forcing the cluster into a situation where uh, it's running in mixed mode and making sure that all the components are behaving the way uh, they, uh, they're expected to behave. And um, and so uh, the testing strategy that we uh, apply here is no different from the previous st testing strategies. Uh, but what is different here is that the cluster is actually running in a mixed mode situation. And so uh, there are uh, what this allows us to uh, verify is that the cluster is going to behave exactly the same as a 4.0 or a 3.0 cluster if it is running in a mixed mode. 3.0 and 4.0 cluster. Uh, obviously, you won't expect all the features to work as uh, um, uh, in, 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 in the case of the client, uh, you would expect all the features to ex exactly work, uh, but uh, the 4.0 specific features would not be um, uh, available because the cluster is running in a mixed mode uh, scenario. Um, and once the cluster is fully upgraded, uh, you know, uh, the, you would expect that the uh, cluster would expose functionality that is 4.0 specific and it's available to the customers to use it. So, um, so with that said, uh, I'll summarize. Um, 4.0 should be stable. That is the goal of uh, the Cassandra community. And a uh, lot has gone into ensuring 4.0 is uh, stable. A lot of issues are uh, have been already reported and fixed. Um, there are a uh, few issues that existing techniques uh, miss. Uh, they do catch uh, some of the very um, uh, obvious uh, failures, but there are certain issues that they have missed. And so the community is working really hard to ensure that all of this, uh, all of these issues are are uh, exposed before we declare Fordato is stable. And. Uh, the, the final takeaway uh, is testing any distributed system is hard. Um, the uh, testing uh, a stateful distributed system like Cassandra is even harder. And um, the emphasis that we've uh, placed on testing is uh, pretty phenomenal. And uh, we, we can't do it uh, by ourselves. Um, so uh, please help test Cassandra 4.0. Uh, the beta 2 for Cassandra is already out on uh, uh, on, on our website um, and uh, you can just download, install it and try it out for your use case. Maybe you'll find an issue, maybe you will uh, not find an issue, uh, but uh, at least we will get some uh, great feedback from our users. So uh, that is, uh, I think that is uh, very uh, critical uh, for us uh, at this point uh, as we are uh, all trying to get 4.0 out soon. And uh, finally, um, we are hiring at Apple. So if you're interested in uh, working at Apple, we have a ton of positions open in our organization. Uh, please follow the link uh, on the on the screen and uh, um, it, it should hopefully take you to the uh, jobs page uh, at Apple uh, where you can apply. Uh, um, this is a ApacheCon specific link. So uh, please do 
um, apply if you are interested in working at Apple and solving some of these problems. Um, all right, uh, that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, apologies for the delay uh, from in, in joining the session, uh, and uh, I'm open for any questions if anybody has any. Uh, you can type the questions in, in the chat. Um, sorry, so I didn't see the previous questions uh, in, in the chat. Um, all right. Um, so the, the graph was not uh, number of bugs over time. It was uh, distribution of bugs. So just, so these are overall bugs uh, and they're classified by defect type. Uh, and so the overall bugs that were caught um, um, so far uh, post 3.0 release um, are summarized here. There's a, a Jira link. If you go to that filter, you should see all the uh, individual issues. Uh, most of these issues won't be something that you would um, be able to, uh, I mean, uh, most of these issues are not something that you would encounter under normal circumstances. These are really, really weird issues. Um, yes, uh, about 4.0 stability. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, we are testing. Uh, there is a very uh, interesting discussion that happened earlier on the dev list uh, about uh, the overall freeze that we had. Uh, in order to focus on on stability, um, obviously there are different viewpoints that people have uh, about stability. Sorry, I'm going back and forth. Um, so I think uh, I think there are a lot of issues that were uh, found and fixed in 4.0. Uh, we're still finding issues, uh, uh, and and the community is working really hard to uh, make sure. Um, uh, make sure that we are able to fix those uh, issues. Um, example of uh, issues uh, that uh, existing techniques miss. Uh, so um, uh, there are various examples. Uh, I think if you if you see this uh, uh, filter, you will see all, all of these. What what uh, immediately comes to my mind is a couple issues uh, with related to networking, and networking is one of the most annoying pieces of uh, uh, you know um, the overall distributed system right uh, so uh, netflix actually encountered this issue with uh, stateful firewalls on aws uh, which uh, which uh, caused us to add a um, um, and add a feature uh, slash a configuration item which allows you to tune tcp user timeout i don't know how many of you have heard of tcp user timeout uh, as a as a uh, uh, kernel parameter slash uh, uh, TCP uh, option, uh, it basically deals with uh, unacknowledged uh, TCP segments, um, and uh, and and what what happened is uh, they encountered an issue where uh, AWS was uh, keeping uh, TCP connections half open. And when a TCP connection is half open, what that means is that uh, the, either the sender, uh, I think either on the sender or receiver side, the connection remains open, but there's nothing on the other side. And um, this actually causes a lot of backlog of uh, uh, network packets. And that is an issue for um, uh, for, for folks uh, because, uh, well, the whole system depends on networking. Uh, and if networking stops functioning, um, you run into this issue. So um, 
so I don't know the Jira off the top of my head, but 4.0 allows you to tune this uh, parameter so that you don't have to uh, deal with um, TCP half open issues. Now, this is something that I don't think any of the existing techniques could catch um, unless you can very accurately um, um, simulate the network. Uh, but even then, I'm not very optimistic. So uh, this is only uh, something that you can encounter when you actually deploy it to a real live environment and try testing Cassandra. Um, so that's an example. Uh, any other questions that I could answer? Uh, I think we are uh, a little bit over time. How do you test different consistency levels in Cassandra? Um, I, uh, um, again, um, there are various tests uh, for, for test testing different consistency levels, um, but uh, that, that this is where I think uh, we need um, more um, diversity in testing, uh, which means uh, if you're using Cassandra in a very uh, different way with uh, different consistency levels, then uh, you would want to put this on an actual cluster and try it out uh, and test it. Uh, there are a lot of tests which test different consistency levels work as expected, but there's no substitute for actually putting this on, on a, a set of machines and running uh, your application against, uh, against that cluster and ensuring that it works uh, in, um, uh, with the consistency levels uh, that, you, uh, that you require. So, um, uh, that's why I encourage uh, try testing it by yourself uh, with your application. I know th there are people who use very weird consistency levels, and we may not actually capture uh, this in a test, but you may actually encounter this issue. Um, and Edward, I agree, uh, 4.0 is uh, comprehensively tested uh, so far. All right, uh, so we are a few minutes over. Um, if there is any uh, question that you have, you can ping me on Slack, uh, Apache Slack, um, and uh, you know uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, all right, so uh, thank you everybody for joining the session and uh, hope uh, ApacheCon is great for all of you.